Welcome to Thriller Recaps. Today, I am explaining the movie, The Legend of Hercules, explaining every scene as it happens. Watch till the end, and please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this. In 1200 BC ancient Greece, a war was fought between two kingdoms. King Amphitryon of Tyrans challenged King Galenus of Argos to a duel to the death in his bid to conquer King Galenus's kingdom. King Amphitryon won the challenge. His wife, Queen Alcmene, disapproved of his action of conquering their neighbor, the kingdom of Argos, knowing they didn't present a threat to him, but rather out of his thirst for more power and gold. He told her that Argos had more priests than they had soldiers. That's why he was able to conquer them. She had her loyal advisor, Chiron, accompany her to a temple bearing gifts to pray to a goddess, Hera, for forgiveness of Amphitryon's transgressions and deliverance from the curse his actions must have brought upon them. The priestess of the temple appeared and informed her that Hera had accepted her gifts. Hera possessed the priestess, using her as a medium to talk to Alcmene. Hera told her that she would bear a savior to her people. Alcmene didn't want Amphitryon to father the child, so Hera asked her if she would bear her husband Zeus's son, who would be a demigod. Alcmene agreed that she would, for the sake of peace. Hera named him Hercules, giving Alcmene the free will to name him what she would like to. Alcmene was visited by Zeus, who was invisible to her, and while they were being intimate, Amphitryon stumbled into the room. In a rage, he rushed to the bed to apprehend who was being intimate with his wife, but he found the room empty. He commanded his battalion to find the intruder, and suddenly thunder struck down in front of him. Months later, Alcmene gave birth to her son. Amphitryon named Alcides, filled with resentment, telling her that Alcides would never be Prince Iphicles' equal as he walked away angrily. Alcmene named her son his true name, which was Hercules. Twenty years later, Prince Alcides went horseback riding through the forests with Princess Hebe of Crete. They spent time together at a waterfall, where Alcides jumped from a high place, scaring Princess Hebe, who thought he was hurt. Princess Hebe gave Alcides a necklace her mother had given to her father once, so he could remember her with it. Prince Iphicles went in search of them, finding hoof marks, which led him to their location. He found them sharing a kiss as he interrupted them. He informed them that King Talus, her father, had sent a search party for her, seeing that she left without informing anyone. They headed back, meeting up with the search party, who left with Hebe to prepare for the banquet that night. Iphicles insisted that Alcides ride with him. Alcides and Iphicles rode into a den of a very strong Nemean lion, which attacked them. Their spears were useless against it, so Hercules grabbed onto its neck, strangling it to death. At the banquet, Iphicles donned the skin of the lion as he took the credit for killing it, claiming that Alcides had fled. Meanwhile, Alcides just smiled at his tail. Their mother, Queen Alcmene, and Hebe saw right through Iphicles lie. Amphitryon announced that the two kingdoms would unite through the marriage of Hebe and Iphicles. Hebe got upset and fled. Alcides went after her as she rode away on her horse. King Amphitryon questioned Prince Iphicles about Hebe's reaction. Iphicles told him that it must have been the surprise of the announcement. Amphitryon asked him why he did nothing, as Hebe made them both fools in front of King Talus and the people of Crete, because they now saw Iphicles as being weak. He reprimanded Iphicles, telling him to act as a man, because he was the future king of Tyrans and should act like it. Alcides convinced Hebe to stop her horse. She told him that she would rather die than marry Iphicles. She confessed her love for Alcides, who replied that he loved her too. Hebe suggested that they should run away together. In the morning, they were chased by the king's men as they tried to ride away. Alcides fought some of the men so that Hebe could have more time before he joined her. She fell into a river so he went after her to save her from drowning. They were seized by the king's men. Amphitryon told Captain Sotiris that his battalion would be halved, as he was to head to Egypt to resolve a revolt. This didn't sit well with Sotiris. Amphitryon gave the excuse that all the men were young. Alcides was brought in to see Amphitryon, who told him that he would be sent to Egypt along with Captain Sotiris and his men. Alcides was handed a battle outfit for his military campaign. Iphicles made Amphitryon ask Alcides if he had taken Hebe's maidenhead, to which Alcides replied that it was none of his business. This made Iphicles punch him, but Alcides broke his fist. Iphicles promised to kill him if he returned. Alcmene told Alcides that he had a high purpose for being here, calling him by his real name, Hercules, and revealing that he was the son of Zeus. Alcides didn't believe her and asked if his father was aware of what she was saying, to which she replied that Zeus did not know. Alcides promised Hebe that he would come back for her as the battalion headed out. On the ship to Egypt, Sotiris shared his concern about Amphitryon having his battalion when they didn't even know what awaited them in Egypt. The small battalion found a cave with a well. 
So Tyrus saw a golden eagle flying overhead, commenting that it was a sign of Zeus, as some people believed. They were ambushed by mercenaries as they tried to secure the cave as a camp. A sword fight began, and every one of Captain Sotyrus's men was killed, leaving only him and Alcides. The leader of the mercenaries, Tarak, asked about Alcides, so Sotyrus pointed out one of his dead men to be Alcides, indicating that Amphitryon meant to eliminate Hercules. Tarak gave them two options, either be killed or be sold. Alcides chose the latter, securing their lives. When Alcides was asked his name, he called himself Hercules to conceal his identity as the prince. The two of them were branded along with other slaves. So Tyrus was appalled by Amphitryon sacrificing his battalion in his quest to kill Alcides. Hercules told So Tyrus that he planned to get back before he be wed Iphicles in three moons' time. So Tyrus doubted they would be able to make it back, so Hercules told him to draw motivation from his family he had left at home. Meanwhile, back at Tyrion's, Alcides' helm, sword, and shield were set ablaze as they all mourned Alcides' death. Iphicles asked his mother for advice on how to win Hebe. She told him that Hebe would be a good bride, but they would have a marriage like the one she had with Amphitryon. Hercules and Sotyrus were sold off as slaves to Lucius, a promoter of gladiator-style fights, and were locked up. Lucius made Sotyrus, who was now their owner, participate in a fight as he tried to get people to bet on him. Meanwhile, Hercules asked one of the captives if they could win their way out of there. So Tyrus won the fight and was thrown back into the cage, exhausted. Lucius informed Hercules that it was his turn to fight and that he had better win. So Tyrus told Hercules that they were doomed, so Hercules promised to get him to his family. Then he went to the arena to fight a much larger gladiator, defeating him. Amphitryon joined Alcmene at Hera's temple. He asked her if she had found peace, and she responded that maybe she would if he told her how Alcides had met his death. Amphitryon asked her how Alcides came to be born, so she told him the truth, that Zeus was the father of Alcides, and that his destiny was to seize power from Amphitryon. Alcmene tried to stab him, but he overpowered her and stabbed her instead with her own dagger. Chiron witnessed this. She told Amphitryon that he was doomed for killing the son of Zeus before she died. Amphitryon then ordered Chiron to claim it was suicide. So Tyrus and Hercules talked to Lucius about letting them fight in Greece because there was much money to be made there. So Tyrus told him about an event held for wealthy people in Greece, where two men faced a group of six men, and if they won, there would be a great reward. Lucius was skeptical at first, but he agreed, on the condition that both of them fight with two of his other fighters, Humbaba and Halfface, in a grand arena. On the day of the fight, Hercules showed great skill by killing Halfface, stabbing him with a sword to protect Sotyrus, whom Halfface had injured and was planning to kill. He then killed Humbaba by throwing him down from a height. Lucius cancelled the deal to take them to Greece, saying that Sotyrus was wounded and couldn't compete, especially since they had killed his other two fighters who could replace him. He intended to place them back in the cage, but Hercules refused, saying that they wouldn't fight unless they were in Greece. Lucius told him that they would die, so Hercules dared him, knowing that Lucius couldn't because he only had him and Sotyrus to fetch him money. Lucius told Sotyrus that he could barely walk Hercules told him to set Sotyrus free while he fought with the six men alone in Greece, ignoring Sotyrus's protests. They traveled to Greece. Sotyrus introduced himself to Chiron, letting him know about Hercules. He took Chiron and two of his loyal men to watch Hercules fight in the arena. Hercules fought with six undefeated gladiators, defeating them for his freedom. He met with Chiron and the others, who pledged their allegiance. They informed him of Amphitryon's tyranny over the people, whom he kept taking from to hire foreign mercenaries. They mentioned that Iphicles's men were the ones tasked with taking from the people, so he couldn't be trusted. Chiron told Hercules that his mother was killed by Amphitryon with her own dagger, and he gave Hercules her dagger. Hercules stumbled upon some soldiers beating up villagers and trying to extort them. He disarmed them and sent them off to the king as a message. Amphitryon was informed that Sotyrus was the one leading the rebellion with his battalion and Hercules. Iphicles offered to take care of the issue by finding Sotyrus to lead them to Hercules. Amphitryon told them that mercenaries from Africa were to arrive tomorrow to take care of it. Hercules was taken to a house where he met Hera's priestess before he was conceived. The priestess told Hercules about his mission and also instructed him to embrace his father in order to reach the full potential of the great power Zeus had bestowed on him. However, Hercules was adamant, asking where his father was with all that had happened to his mother and Sotyrus men. The priestess replied that Zeus had always been there, but Hercules wasn't ready for him yet. Iphicles confronted Hebe, telling her that she must love him and the children they would bear. Hebe begged him to return her to her father because she didn't want this marriage. 
angered by her reply, he told her that he would wed her or she could take her life. Hebe went to jump from the top of the palace when she was stopped by Chiron, who informed her that Alcides was alive. The next day, she found Alcides at their usual meeting spot by the stream and watched him swim to her, not really believing that he truly was alive. He told her that he was alive as he held her, giving her a kiss as they spent time together. Hebe told him that they would run away together, but Alcides replied that they wouldn't run but instead stay there. The African mercenaries arrived at the palace. Amphitryon confronted Tarak about failing to kill every single man in the battalion after being paid a good amount of gold, because so Tyrus and Hercules were planning to start a rebellion against him. Tarak promised to rectify the error, so Tyrus went home to take his family to safety but found his wife dead. Iphicles and Tarak appeared, asking him to take them to Hercules, threatening so Tyrus' son, and forcing so Tyrus to lead them to Hercules. Hercules and his men were ambushed, with Iphicles holding Hebe captive. He entered the room and was surprised to discover that Hercules was Alcides. Iphicles commanded that Hercules be taken away along with Sotiris, while the others were executed. Hercules was chained and publicly flogged. Amphitryon mocked him in front of the people, saying that he was an impostor since he couldn't save himself. Amphitryon sent for Chiron and Sotiris to be brought forth. He ordered Iphicles to kill Chiron. Hercules tried to get through to Iphicles to spare Chiron, but when Chiron reverently talked about Hercules— Something seemed to snap inside him, so he killed Chiron. In anguish, Hercules called Zeus his father, telling him that he believed in him and asking for strength. The clouds started rumbling, and just as Iphicles was planning to kill Sotiris next, Hercules broke free from his chains. Amphitryon, Tarak, and Iphicles fled, but not before sending soldiers after Hercules with orders to kill him. Hercules killed all the guards. Filled with grief, Hercules went to Chiron, who was already dead. The village men told Hercules that they were willing to fight with him, so Hercules and Sotiris were able to raise an army. Iphicles started the ceremony to wed Hebe. She told him that she would always love Hercules, no matter what happened, and that was how their marriage would be. Hercules and his army stormed Amphitryon's palace. He was recognized by Amphitryon's palace guard, who commanded his men to lower their aim. Tarak's men came out to fight Hercules and his men, with the aid of the palace guard's men. Hercules defeated them. The palace guard and his men pledged their allegiance to Hercules as he and his men moved to the palace. He asked Amphitryon to show himself, which he did. Amphitryon told Hercules that Iphicles and Hebe were about to consummate their marriage. A wall of fire was then triggered at the front of the palace, while Amphitryon's mercenaries flooded them on all sides. Hercules challenged Amphitryon to a duel to the death. The victor takes all. But Amphitryon was only interested in Hercules laying down his weapon. Hercules raised his sword to the sky, but just then, his sword was infused with the power of lightning, which he used to lay waste and defeat the mercenaries. Then he went after Amphitryon, telling him that he came to kill the tyrant who killed his mother. They both engaged in a vicious combat, and Hercules nearly defeated Amphitryon. But Iphicles appeared with Hebe, holding her hostage, and threatened to kill her if Hercules did not let Amphitryon go. Hebe told him that she didn't matter, so he should kill Amphitryon. Hercules hesitated, so Hebe thrust a dagger through her shoulder, killing Iphicles. Hercules killed Amphitryon with the same blade that killed his mother, finally avenging her death. He rushed to Hebe's side, promising never to leave as she slowly drifted into unconsciousness. Hebe gave birth to a son as Hercules spent time with him. That night, Hercules peered down at his kingdom from the palace walls, finally fulfilling his destiny as he looked towards the moon. Subscribe for more daily videos. Your support, likes, shares, and subscriptions mean a lot. See you in the next video.